I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video I'm going to show you this Barracuda 2 lathe chuck from PSI. Basically I'm going to show you the basics of this, how it works, and some of the attachments that you can use with this. This is the chuck as I received it in the mail, UPS. It was an extra $11 for shipping from PSI to get this comes in this box and you can see on this it's got this label on here which kind of seems upside down to me because you'd think the handle at the top and these feet on the bottom the label should be facing the other way around it seems to be upside down however it's not going to be a big issue for me because when I put this on my shelf it's kind of like on a bookshelf or something so I'll be looking at the sides here or the front wherever I put a label to identify it kind of like the spine of a book so I'll be looking there to see where it's at now this comes in this case and inside here we have all the parts now these come in plastic wrapped bags the metal parts because it's all coated with oil to protect it from corrosion while it's sitting in the warehouse waiting to be shipped out to you this is the main chuck itself and then it comes with four jaws. These jaws, some bigger jaws, smaller jaws, and small jaws. Uh, it comes with a, an adapter. I think this adapts the drive on your lathe head from a three-quarter to a one inch by eight TPI, which is what the inside of this is. It's a one inch by eight TPI. Also comes with a worm screw in this package. And you get your chuck key. So you can do one-handed adjustments with that and has this Allen wrench that you use for taking the screws off so you can change out your jaws. This is not the quick change jaw system where you just push a button and they just kind of pop off right away for you. don't know if I have a lot of confidence in those because I would think the tolerance levels are maybe not quite as tight. Then they charge you more money for it too. Anyways, this Allen works great, and also I noticed when I had this apart before that the lathe truck itself has markings on it, as do the jaws that go on this. Go one, two, three, and four, and on the base of the truck jaw itself, it's marked one, two, three, and four, so you know which jaws go where. I haven't opened the other ones yet, but I presume they'll be numbered similarly. As that is and that's to keep since this is a cylindrical threaded shape that's expanding these jaws and so forth I would think that depending on the positions of the threads some of these jaws are going to be slightly off from each other depending on the perimeter or diameter of that thread where it's meeting up at so that's why they've got these numbered so you can match up and get perfect alignment for these jaws now underneath this front cover I've noticed in this case that it uh, has a lot of places where you can put other tools and so forth. Then underneath here it's got the instructions for this. And basically it's two pages, letter size page, of what to do. This is a fairly simple chuck to use, so I'll be showing you how to do that. But if you're new to it, probably a good idea to read the instructions. And kind of keep this in place after a while because this keeps falling off pretty easily. I'll probably put a couple pieces of double sided tape on here to make this stay in place and not fall off on me every time I open the box. So, what I'm going to do is uh, take these out here, get them all cleaned up. I'll use some like rubbing alcohol and some paper towels to get all these cleaned up and get the oil off so I can work with them on wood and stuff without staining the wood from the oil preservatives on here. I have taken all these parts out of their packages and put them into this like brownie pan. Don't tell my wife about that. And I'll do this with some rubbing alcohol. I'll put some on, the, on these parts here and then I'll use one of these acid brushes for scrubbing them up a little bit. With this chuck itself I want to be careful with that because it's got the grease and lubrication in here so I don't want to get anything of a solvent inside of there. So on this, I'll probably 
wipe down the outside of it here. I took the jaws off and put them in here along with all the screws and everything. So I'll just wipe this off with a paper towel that's wet in the rubbing alcohol so I don't soak it down and dilute any of the lubrication on that. Now on these jaws that are not mounted onto the chuck, they come with these zip ties on them to kind of keep them all together during shipping. So I'll cut those off so we can get them apart and get them cleaned up. I'll just use a side cutters maybe I'll just use a knife of course this one should be able to slip right off yeah it's these others that have a little bit of a ledge on them or something that makes it so they can't slide off so easily so those I'll have to try and cut uh, hopefully without cutting myself and but that worked pretty good. Something I also notice about these jaws is they're numbered also. One, two, three, four. So that you can line them up correctly when you put them on this chuck. Trying to keep these kind of together. It's kind of easy to tell which pieces go together. It's not real difficult. And I'll put some uh, rubbing alcohol on some things. Just squirt a little bit on. And some of the parts. And I'll start wiping that down. Like I said, for the main chuck part here, I'm going to use a paper towel soaked in some rubbing alcohol. Might be a good idea if you want to wear some like latex gloves or something. And just kind of clean this off a bit. Just to get it so it's not so greasy to handle. And to avoid getting any solvent inside. Uh, the parts there where we want the grease to be able to stay at. Now we'll let that dry a bit. Actually, I'm going to set it aside here on a piece of paper towel while I work on these other parts. I'm going to lay out some more paper towels here that I can lay these parts on. So I'm going to lay a couple of layers of paper towels here. So I don't soak through too much stuff here on the tabletop. Then I'm just going to kind of get these cleaned up a bit. Get the oils off. They clean up pretty good. What's good about the alcohol is that uh, it's a good cleaner. Cleans off the oil and it evaporates uh, so you don't have to worry about drying it off too much. Last set of jaws here. All right. Got all those parts cleaned up well. Wipe out my pan. Okay, so I've got these all cleaned up and very good and not greasy anymore or oily. And what I did was these all are kind of like loose pieces now, like this, before they were tied up with a zip tie and what I did was to use some of these velcro straps here that I get at Home Depot for pretty cheap they come in gray and black uh, as you get them like that and just to show you here you get these straps off of this roll and you know they kind of look like this uh, velcro strap and what I do is I Kind of tie this around to make a loop. And then I'll tie these around on this carefully on here and get it snugged up. That way, instead of being loose parts like this, they hold together. And I've done that with these three parts anyway. These jaws here are the ones I'll probably most commonly use. It also comes with eight screws for holding these jaws in place. There's two screws per jaw, so eight screws in total. And the kit here came with eight extra screws. They came in a little bag that was sealed up. I cut them out of that and put them in one of these little Ziploc bags that I 
typically get with a lot of my pen parts when I'm making pens. So those are handy bags to save onto for small parts like this. Now the worm screw looks to be about a 3 8 diameter in this groove here that fits into these jaws. So that works pretty good. It fits this set of jaws and this larger set of jaws. These other two sets of jaws the worm screw won't fit into. Also something I've noticed is that when you put these jaws onto the chuck base here, number four has a pin in it and that pin coordinates with this groove in the bottom of this jaw here. And what that does is give you your limits as far as maximum openings that you can have which is a safety feature because you don't want to get out to like the last thread or something like that and be running about three or four thousand rpm and you're barely hanging on there so that's a good safety feature so your jaws don't come apart on you it's like some other jaws i've got they didn't have this on there so if you open this up too far it could come apart on you and you could have difficulty trying to get these lined back in correctly again into the correct locations. So, good feature of that. Also, I noticed that when trying to unscrew these screws, they have a Allen head in them for the wrench and uses this Allen wrench. We also call them socket head screws. On this one, it can be really, really tight there to try and get these off. And I don't know exactly if there's an L shape on this Allen wrench inside this handle or how strong this is if I twist this too much if it's going to come loose or come apart. So if you got one that's really tough it says right on the handle here this is a 3.0 millimeter. So you might want to grab a 3.0 millimeter Allen wrench, uh, standard Allen wrench, if you got a tough one to work with. Well I got along with doing things with this and saw some of the accessories online where they have some of these lathe chuck flat jaws like this and actually I already had some from a previous lathe chuck that I had so and these work perfectly fine and these are the same thing as what PSI has online available probably for less money than what I paid for these works great mine is a little bit smaller than the one that PSI has I get kind of a maximum diameter bowl out of this of about seven and a half inches. The PSI one online, and I'll put a link to that below, you can get a maximum diameter of like eight inches. My lathe, I happen to have a 10 inch clearance as a maximum diameter I can do on my lathe. So eight and a half is within plenty of tolerance there. And these work great. They are numbered for the four plate positions. And the one that has a key to it to stop the plates from coming too far apart and coming apart on you, which is not a good thing. Uh, These plates have that on there too, and all the holes line up perfectly well for me. And these look exactly the same thing as what PSI has, and it fits this truck perfectly. And I can adjust these kind of in and out with the tool here. Well, it's on so I can clamp my workpiece in. They come with these rubber stops here that screw on here. That screw into place here. And you get eight of these so you get a good grip all the way around. Didn't come with an Allen wrench. He's so got like a socket head screw here. But I found amongst my many leftover Allen wrenches laying around, I found one that fits this perfectly. So keep that handy with these parts and so this will work great for me uh, if you want to get a set of these expanding flat jaws you can do that through the link i'll put down below this works great it's a good accessory to have especially if you're doing bowls and stuff like that larger objects i'm going to demonstrate here a little bit how i set up this chuck here on my lathe one of the first things i'm going to do is put on one of these washers for the drive head and what that does is keep the metal on metal from making contact because if they do it gets to be like locked on there 
and it's very difficult to get that released again. So I put this washer on there. These are very inexpensive. Get them in packs of uh, two or three at a time. A lot of places have them available. Now let's put the chuck on. Snug that. And with my lathe here, I can kind of lock my head in place. Then I can you know, use something to make sure I got it snug down there. Make sure you unlock this again before you turn things on. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, set up a piece of wood in here for turning and do a little bit of turning just as a demonstration of how this works. And may do some others just as some quick examples. Okay, so I got this piece chucked up here in here, and this is just a piece I've been practicing with. I've got a bunch of these basically construction grade or lumber 2 by 2s and I've been using these to get a little practice on and doing things and learning how to use different kinds of lathe chisels on them. This one I've been practicing on and this turns free so I can and I've got the chisel lined up here for that. It's a little bit rough right now but see I'll do a little bit here. Basically with that you can see how this chuck holds this in. I put it kind of loosely in the truck to start with and then I've got my center points marked on the ends. I brought up my tailstock here the 60 degree cone. Got that position down there so it was straight. Then I tightened down the jaws on that once I had it going straight. Rather than trying to bottom out and tighten the jaws on that because then the piece might be off a little bit. So I like to have the tailstock up to it before I clamp it down. So I've mounted up this round piece here that I'm going to do and by putting these flat jaws onto the chuck and then using these rubber feet to hold it in place. I tried to get it in there as squarely as I could and as centered as I could. But that's hard to do and probably a good idea to use a tailstock on the end of it when you first start out to get this rounded and that way you can get it to a good perfect round to a certain point then flip it around and put it back into these flat jaws again and you'll be on a much straighter run that way. But so much just for a demonstration there for now on that. This is something I'll have to get some practice on since I've not done bowls before. Well, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration from it to do something with your lathe truck on your lathe. If you did, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and fellow craftspersons. Also, please subscribe to see what I may come up with next. And be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on anything. I also greatly appreciate all the comments that I get from you and all the great tips and tricks. So if the ladies don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Thank you.